Hello YouTube, it is Everything Epan here, and in this video we are doing a video tutorial on how to install Windows Whistler Build 2419 in VirtualBox. Uh, now I had done a video previously actually on this uh, version of Whistler in VMware, uh, since I hadn't figured out how to do it in VirtualBox at the time. That was a long time ago, as you can see through the previous builds of Whistler um, that I've done in VirtualBox. It's uh, relatively the same process and uh, we'll show you how to do this uh, in this video. Now, what do you need, one of the unique things about this uh, version of Whistler, uh, it was a part of the uh, beta two series or uh, pre-beta two, if you wanna call it even. Uh, it does uh, come with a new boot screen on this from the previous versions of Whistler, but it only lasted for this build of Whistler, which I found interesting. But it is a very nice look, I feel like. Um, kind of surprised they had kind of went away from it, but. Uh, you'll see what it looks like here if you haven't already uh, in this. But uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this tutorial here. So uh, down below, you'll get links uh, for VirtualBox, of course, will be down there. If you do not already have it, you can download it for your specified OS. You'll also have a link down there for the Windows Whistler 2419 ISO uh, from WinWorld PC's website here. And uh, there will also be a link for downloading the MS-DOS 6.22 ISO if you do not already have it. Uh, this would be important for us to be able to reset that BIOS state back to the date that it needs to for this build, obviously since it's a beta and it did expire at a certain point. Um, and VirtualBox does not have its own BIOS system. So that will be in the description as well, which will allow us to change the date. So um, we'll go ahead and jump into it now that you've got all the uh, links and files needed in the description there um and i'll also leave a link there if you do uh you can use winrar or 7zip to open that uh ms dos file so also uh i can link winrar down there as well that's usually what i use but you'll need one of those two tools to open that up um but again now that we've got all those uh we'll go ahead and create a new virtual machine in virtual box when we got to open here I'm just going to call this machine Windows Whistler Build 2419. For the version, you'll want to select Windows XP 32 bits and then hit next. It's going to ask how much RAM you want to dedicate to it. Just leave it at the recommended at 192. Um, really isn't much of any reason to up it at all. And then we'll go ahead and create our virtual hard drive so you can pick whichever file type you wish um, and then hit next. And then usually I just leave it at dynamically allocated. You can do fixed size if you want. Um, Neither of these options really matter as well. Hit next, and then it's gonna ask us to dedicate how much space or what you want the uh, capacity of that virtual drive to be. Um, usually I just leave it at the normal uh, recommended amount of 10 gigs. You can up it if you want, uh, but I would not go any lower than five if you do wanna decrease it at all. Um, and then once you've got all that information, just go ahead and uh, hit create. We'll create our machine. And then what we're gonna do is, uh, I just went up and reorganized it here, but what we'll want to do is have that highlighted. We'll go into our settings and then we'll go into the storage tab here and to where this empty disk is. We'll want to hit the disk and choose a file. And then um, we'll get to the Whistler ISO in a second there. The first thing we will want to enter in is that MS-DOS 6.22 ISO file. Um, so we can go ahead and change the BIOS state before we do the setup. So once you've got that located and uh, entered in there, um, go ahead and hit OK. It'll insert that into the virtual drive and then we'll start the machine. And so the machine should start up and boot up into MS-DOS. And then it's going to load up everything, load up the CD driver as well. So what we'll wanna do is for this, we'll go ahead and type in date and it'll display the current dates. Uh, you'll wanna type in uh, 01-14-2001. I will also have this typed out in the description if you cannot see it in here for any reason, uh, just to have it for reference. And once you have it entered in, hit enter. You can confirm that it's been changed by typing in date once more, and it'll give you the date uh, that you just entered in there. And if you hit enter, it won't change it. And now that we've had that changed, we can insert the Windows Whistler ISO by going to right click down here and choosing the disk file, and we'll go locate the uh, Whistler ISO. I did have it in the quick list, but I just kind of wanted to show it on here uh, just for kind of a reference there. So uh, it won't actually be na named Whist Windows Whistler Build 2419. It'll have kind of that default name. I had just renamed it previously and never had changed it back. So um, now that we do have that entered in here, 
uh, we'll want to go ahead and direct into that R drive. Um, we'll do a reset here on the machine. I believe this disk is bootable. Yep, there we go. It is bootable here. So it's going to uh, go ahead and boot up into the operating system. Uh, or the first portion of the setup, I should say. Uh, so say set up a starting Windows Whistler. And then should bring us up to that first portion. There we go. So we'll hit enter. Uh, twice here as a matter of fact to continue those first two prompts it'll have us accept the license agreement just hit F8 to accept that and then uh, we'll go ahead and format our drive by hitting enter on it and then we'll do the NTFS file system quick um, that should be the quickest one to do and I'll use the newer uh, file system that was unveiled at the time and it's going to format the drive examine the disk and then it's going to start to copy the files over which should be uh, relatively quick, uh, obviously, since this is in the virtual machine and um, isn't on the actual hardware, so we'll go a lot quicker. Um, so once it's done copying the files over, it's going to prompt us to do a reboot. So we'll want to go ahead and hit enter. It's going to reboot the machine. And do not press any key to boot from the CD. Otherwise, we'll just keep going in a continuous loop. And then it should do uh, boot up into the next portion of the uh, setup here after that. So um, it will go blank here for a little bit and then the boot screen should pop up after, yep, it'll load that bar. And here you see that boot screen um, with the colored lines there uh, going across, which I think is a really nice design. But yeah, this was the only build of Whistler that had that boot screen. It did end up changing once more with having the new Windows flag and everything on the uh, future versions uh, or builds of Whistler. So uh, you'll see the kind of traditional look of what the XP setup screen looked like, just a little bit different on the background. And of course, um, had the check marks on the left side and it was, uh, orange or yellow uh, on the bar and had code name Whistler. So um, this was relatively uh, what XP had for the this portion of the setup here, but um, it'll continue to load the install devices portion. And then it will come up with this first screen here. And then uh, what we'll want to do is hit next. Uh, after choosing your language and keyboard layout if you need to adjust it. And then on the next screen, it will ask us to enter in a name and uh, organization. You can do that as such. And then it will also have us enter in a uh, product key here too. So that uh, will be included or should be included in that uh, file there that you get from WinWorld PC. Again, you will need to use either 7-zip or um, WinRAR to open that up or extract those files. It'll have a product key file in the uh, file as well. So um, I'll go ahead and enter this in real quick here and then uh, we'll come back to that next part of the setup. All right, so we've got the uh, product key entered in. We'll hit next to continue. It should bring us to name our computer. I'm just gonna call this um, Whistler2419. I know you can't have spaces uh, in it there. Uh, you can do an administrative password if you want, but uh, you can skip that by hitting next. And then um, adjust your time zone as needed. It should keep your same date as uh, January 14th of 2001. And then hit next. It'll do install network and then just leave it on typical settings and hit next. And then it should proceed with the next uh, part of the setup there. Sometimes it's kind of a glitch there. Uh, just leave this as the default of no and work group as well. Hit next. And then after that, it will go ahead and go forth with uh, finishing up that install process. So um, this portion can take a little bit of time here. Uh, probably would actually be the longest uh, port of the setup out of all of this. So uh, go ahead and uh, it may stay stuck on this screen for a little bit there, but uh, let it sit through and just kind of keep through going through the install process. Uh, basically, do just kind of some copying of files and some other things. And there you go. As you can see, it's starting to do that. And um, then we'll do some other tasks uh, from the setup. So kind of let this run through and then um, it should go to another restart here. So I will let this uh, keep running through all these uh, different tasks and uh, setup things. And then I'll come back to you guys once we hit that uh, next restart point here. 
Alright, so once it completes here, it may come up with this uh, view log uh, here because it came up with one or more errors, um, which is okay. Uh, we can go ahead and just close that out. It's going to go ahead and reboot the virtual machine here. And then once again, do not press any key to boot from the CD. Uh, I'll just keep going in that loop. And then it should uh, eventually boot up into the next part of the setup here. So um, may sit on this black screen for just a little bit. Just let it uh, load through. It eventually will come up, as you can see. And then again, we'll come up with that nice boot screen uh, for that. You'll see the build 2419 uh, Windows Whistler Professional. We'll come up with a display settings box. Just check that box and hit yes and hit yes once more. And then it will get us into the setup. So it does the startup sound there. And you'll see that um, Merlin will actually come up here. This is what his name is. As you can see, Merlin uh, comes up. This was not included in Windows XP. They just had the uh, little question helper there. Um, but now we're on the uh, last part of the setup here. So uh, what we'll need to do is we'll go ahead and hit next. It'll ask what kind of a network connection here. Just do um, yes and hit next. You actually can skip it if you want. And then uh, just do no on this and hit next. Um, and then just do the only person. Like I said, I can't imagine you're going to set up multiple user accounts. And then just type in a uh, name. Hit next, and it will say thank you. We'll finish, and it will log us into our account. So, may take a little bit to load. Kind of have seen that throughout the process that it does take some time to load uh, through portions of the setup, um, even after clicking through it. So, uh, just give it its time. It will eventually go ahead and give us into the login screen, and we'll um, push us through onto the desktop. So, um, we'll let that go through and then there you go we'll log us into our account uh, you can tell that the audio is a little bit uh, has a little bit of a kind of a choppiness to it um, that is something I've noticed with this build and uh, at least for me it might be different for you but uh, there we go we have installed uh, Windows Whistler build 2419 uh, you can see it kind of has a little bit of a resemblance of the uh, XP start menu here. It's got the icons already changed over, um, but it has this blue theme. This is the watercolor theme is what they had called it um, on here. And you can switch back to classic if you want, but yeah, um, that is all there is to it. Uh, successfully installed Whistler 2419 in VirtualBox. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, if you certainly did enjoy the video or if it, it would found it helpful there for you, uh, certainly leave a like down below uh, if you have any future video ideas anything there you want to throw in the comments certainly can do so as well and if you're not already subscribed uh, you can hit the subscribe button down below and hit the bell to be updated uh, whenever i upload a uh, video and to be just kind of keeping up to date on my uh, content so um, this was the video tutorial on how to install windows whistler build 2419 in virtualbox thank you uh, so much again for watching and i will see you guys in the next video